Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here, playing some more Splendor. In case the rules explanation video didn't quite do justice to the game and help you figure out whether it's the kind of game you'd like, why don't you go ahead and check out this video, which uh, you're already checking out because you're already watching it anyway, where I'm going to play against the AI so you can see how the game flows. Um, the point here is not to show off expert gameplay because I am not an expert of the game, so you'll see me make some bad moves, but hopefully you won't know they're bad because you don't actually know the game that well because... Well, why are you watching this if you already know the game? Anyway, the point is, we're going to go ahead and play against the AI. Now, I like to play with three players. I think that's my sweet spot for Splendor. With four players, I feel like I'm just waiting too long for my turn to come around, and there's not enough value from that fourth player to make it feel worthwhile. And two players, I don't think the game is deep enough to make me want to play this as a two-player game. So there are games like Through the Ages, Innovation, Seven Wonders Duel, that I think are just way better two-player games. Um, this is, I don't know, this game doesn't really hit that spot for me as far as the two-player goes. So three is sort of the sweet spot, and that's my preference. Now, of course, the AI is not very good, and I don't really hold that against an app for having bad AI. I think people just don't understand how hard it is to play a good AI or to make a good AI. It would constitute a major breakthrough in computer science to have an AI that can play this as well as the best humans. But that being said, I have found that in the app, the biggest challenge I get comes from having one AI be specialized and one be opportunistic. I haven't played around with all the permutations, but this one um, has led to some pretty challenging games. I definitely come close to losing pretty often, and sometimes I actually do lose. So, um, well, we'll see what happens here. Hopefully, I don't totally embarrass myself. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and um, turn on the avatar here so that you can see how many... Um, gems of each type the AIs have. Your hand is down here, but it's important to keep an eye on the computers on your opponent's hand sometimes to see what they can and cannot purchase. Now, this is actually a pretty bad opening draw. So this is one of those cases where it's not necessarily good to be the first player because the first player's advantage is that you can be the person to purchase the first mine, but these mines all suck. The best ones are the ones that either cost two and one or just plain three or maybe two and two. Um, one, 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 one is also okay. So there's a lot of them that are good. We just happen to get all the shitty ones. Um, four of the same gem is very hard to get. Three of one and two of another, that's a total of five gems, which is really, really bad considering A, it's not even worth any points, and B, that's like two more gems than the cheapest mines. And then two, two, one is also bad considering, again, there's ones that just cost two, two, so why the fuck buy a two, two, one if you don't have to? So this is one of those cases where the first player advantage is a little bit wasted, and so uh, being third would have been good here. But again, the third player advantage is that you always have the last turn of the game, no matter what. So you always have a chance to catch up, and if you hit the 15-point mark first, you're guaranteed to win. So here, I feel like I'm on the back foot. Now, one decision to make is, do I actually go for these crappy mines, or do I maybe go up to the next level? Like, these cost, like this one right here, it costs seven gems which isn't that much worse than the mine that costs five gems, but it's given me a point. I don't know, I don't usually like to jump up to those super fast, so it's a tough call. You can also make some weird plays, like grab two sapphires, for instance, and just like go for this mine first. Then, of course, you're effectively paying a gem, because I'm taking two instead of three, so I'm basically paying a gem to do that. I don't know. We'll take a black, a red, and a blue. So I'm putting myself in a position to buy this emerald, um, not sure if that's the right play. Again, this game is surprisingly deep for how simple the rules are, so we'll, we'll play it by ear. One thing I've noticed about the AI is that the AI does tend to run out the gem pile without ever purchasing a mine. That is good when you're not the first player against the AI, and there's a really cheap good mine here. They forfeit their opportunity, basically, to pick up that mine, and instead, um, you can get it. But here where everything is shit, I'm not really sure if that's, that's actually very valuable. What I'm going to do here is just um, run out some of these piles. And let the AI make the first purchase. I'm hoping that if I just have a big enough array of gems, that something will come out that I can purchase. Like one of the mines that costs two and one. Or maybe a red one that just costs three. Oh yeah, this is perfect. Two and two, that's totally fine. So yeah, I'm saving myself a gem. And red is fine. So there's two nobles that are green and there's two nobles that are red. So a ruby is pretty solid. Plus, also looking ahead here, we got one of these juicy fibers. So having some rubies is good for that too. Okay, so now my opponent picked up that emerald mine. This opponent hasn't picked up anything yet, although he should. No, he's just going to keep hoarding those gems. 
All right, we got a pretty good mine here. This one that costs three. It's just a total of three gems. That's pretty solid. This one also costs only three gems for me because I have an emerald. So this is one of the important things in the game is to not just look at the overall cost of the mines, but how much it's how many gems the mine is actually costing you. So for me personally, these two mines are actually equivalent right now. And they're actually both pretty good because they help me maybe purchase this mine later on. So what I'm going to do is definitely collect a black gem, giving myself the option of purchasing the sapphire mine. I'm also going to grab a, a ruby to maybe consider going after this mine. Sapphires are pretty good. There's three different nobles that use sapphires. And by the way, I'm not necessarily going to get all these nobles. Usually I'm only going to get like one or two per game. I don't play a nobles heavy strategy, but it's nice to be flexible. It's nice to be open to getting a variety of nobles. So certainly sapphire mines in this game are better than say diamond mines, just on average. Anyway, for my third gem, I'm not exactly sure. We'll just pick up another sapphire. No, I'm actually gonna pick up a, hang on, I'm gonna pick up a diamond. I like to have one of everything at all times because one of the better early game mines are the ones that cost one each of four different gems. So having one of everything to be open to exploiting that I feel is worthwhile. Okay, so my opponent here actually decided to get a one point mine early on, which is, I think, a pretty bum deal. It cost what well, that cost like seven gems compared to these that only cost four. So I don't think that was actually a worthwhile move. Now, here, oh my god, I just realized there's a rule I forgot to mention in my rules video. Whoops! I'll have to add that to the description of that video. Um, you can have a maximum of 10 gems at the end of your turn. So if you end your turn with more than 10 gems, you have to put gems back into the supply. So right here, if I were to take three different gems, tempting as that is, I'd have to put one back because I'd end up going up to 11. So what I'm going to do is just purchase the sapphire mine, spend all of my black gems, and uh, you know now I've got two different mines, whereas my opponents each have only one, so I've got to feel pretty good about that. My next plan is this emerald mine. If this goes, I'm just going to buy it. This only costs me two total gems because I already have conveniently a sapphire and a ruby. So that's a stroke of luck in my favor for sure. So I get a really cheap mine really soon after getting the last mine that I picked up. Okay, now this diamond mine is actually pretty darn good. It only costs me two gems. Even though it has a very expensive price, the cost to me is actually cheaper than any of the other mines that are out. Um, unfortunately, in order to get the gems that I need, I'd have to... I have to play suboptimally or do a little bit of inefficiency. I can only take two gems here. Uh, if I'm taking gems, I'm taking an onyx and a ruby. So I'm, I'm missing a little bit of opportunity here because I'm just not collecting as many gems as I could. One option I can do to circumvent that is instead of taking these two gems, I can reserve a building that I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to, or a mine that I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to buy. So like, for example, I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to buy uh, probably this one, try to pick up as many rubies as I can and go up to seven. Um, going after this one when I don't have any onyx mines is a bit ambitious. This one actually is not bad since I already have progress towards it on all three counts. So I could like do, do a reservation on this. The disadvantage of that is by reserving this mine, I'm getting this mine at a later date. So I'm going to make a judgment call here. I am going to play inefficiently by collecting only two gems on my turn. But the idea is that that move, oh my god, that was a mistake. <laughs> that move gives me a mine sooner. But unfortunately, that ends up blowing up in my face because I didn't even get the mine that I was doing. So clearly, I should have re reserved a mine. Either I should have reserved that mine itself or a different one. Okie doke. Well, I think here we'll ship gears a little wee tad. Um, this mine costs me six gems. That's pretty expensive still. I, I, I don't like to rush for these. I'm th I think it's a valid strategy. It's just not one that I personally have mastered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick up all the, all the singletons that are in the supply. And I'm going to get ready to purchase the sapphire. Sapphires, again, being good because there are three nobles that use sapphires. And um, it's worth a point, too. So it you know kind of catches me up to my opponents, keeps my economy going. It just seems to be a good move. So here we go. Let's pick up that money. You know what? I probably should have considered actually getting this one because that just, that just appeared. This one would have cost me, um, at the time I had one sapphire, so one, two, three gems. I paid three gems for the sapphire mine. That's eh, fine. All right. Uh, it works out. It works out really well, especially because my opponents let me get this one. So now this only costs me two gems, one emerald and one onyx because I have both of the sapphires because I just bought a sapphire. So I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. I got five mines. My opponents have three each. So I'm definitely ahead on economy and not even that far back on a point. So I think right here I'm already at an advantage compared to the AIs. Now I'd like to pick up this onyx mine. It is worth a point. And I'm, I'm, it's only going to cost me two gems. Observe that even though this mine is cheaper, this mine costs me two gems, just like this one does, but this one's worth a point. Um, Onyx is about as valuable as Emerald, 
in the distribution for the nobles. So what I'm going to do is definitely pick up a sapphire this turn. The question is, what other chips do I pick up? I think I'm going to grab a ruby and maybe consider getting this emerald mine later on. Um, and then I'm also going to take an onyx. I, I wouldn't really be opposed eventually to purchasing this mine. I think the best expensive mines are the, the four point ones that cost seven and the three point ones that cost six. They're just really, really nice if you can pick those up. Obviously, if you have the, the three mines for these five pointers, if you have that taken care of, then they, the co they cost the same as the four point mines. And of course, they're worth an extra point. So that's a good thing, too, if you can manage it. Now I'm in a pretty decent spot. I have one of every mine. So, and we haven't seen like any of the mines come out here that cost one of each. Like I don't think we've seen a single one. So those are the deck is stacked with those, and I think pretty soon we're going to start flipping over some mines that I can get for free. This is actually not one of them. It costs two sapphires, but it's free for me because two sapphires is exactly what I happen to have right now. So I'm getting a free onyx right there. Oh man, oh man, that's a lucky flip. Now I have the ability to purchase this for free, and my opponents do not. So unless they reserve this, I'm going to get a diamond mine for free. Now, uh, of course, diamond's not the greatest my, uh, resource type in this game, nobles-wise, but I really don't care that much about it. Um, I would like to get this sapphire potentially later on, so I, I don't mind getting um, a good base of diamonds. And my opponents aren't that far ahead of me in points that I'm too worried about falling behind generating economy from these cheaper mines. Okay, so now I have a choice to make. What I could do is I could pick up Onyx and um, Sapphire and Diamond and then purchase this Emerald Mine, which costs me two gems and is worth a point. Another option is to purchase this Sapphire Mine, which only costs me one gem. I'm going to do that because I get it sooner. It only costs me one gem, and uh, I, want, I want Sapphires because Sapphires give me, first of all, qualifications for two of the Nobles, and they also qualify me for two of these upper cards having three of them that is so i feel like that's worth having okay now there's two different mines i can pick up for free this one and this one are both free for me so i have to decide which one to take well my opponents can get this well th okay th this opponent can get this one for free for this one he has to pay a diamond this opponent has to pay a diamond for this one and an emerald for this one so both of them have to pay a gem for this one but one of them can get this one for free. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the one that both of them can get. Uh... Wait, did I do that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because th this one was the same for them both. This one was better for one of them. So I took the one that was better for one of my opponents. Okay, I, th I think I did that right. I think I did. Okay. So anyway, now I have to choose. Do I get another emerald and maybe go for this four-pointer here? Um, This one's free, of course. Or do I pay a gem to pick up this ruby on the basis of uh, rubies maybe being useful for something like this one or this one here. Eh, let's just get the one that's free. Emeralds are, I don't think, I don't even know if emeralds are worse than rubies for me right here. And even if they are, I don't think they're worse enough to justify not taking the free mine. All right, we got a free ruby that just popped out. This one might go though. Nope, my opponent chooses to get a point, which is fine by me. Now there's two different mines I can get for free here. Um, diamonds would actually put me one onyx mine away from getting this noble, but rubies put me one ruby away from getting this noble, and both of them are useful for picking up this thing, although diamonds are a little bit better because I already have the three blues that I need for this one. I don't, I don't have the three onyx I need for that one. Well, I have an onyx gem. Hmm. It's a tough call here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this diamond one. For a couple of reasons. First of all, it lets me get this one for free. Second of all, this one costs more, so my opponents might be less likely to pick it up. Well, he picked it up, but he's going to have to spend some gems for the privilege. Now, one problem with the, at the moment is that I do have the ability to get this sapphire mine for free, but picking up four sapphires, and four sapphires actually is good because it helps me qualify for this noble, then I'm one emerald away from getting this noble, but the problem is nothing here costs a lot of sapphires. You're really going to be collecting, well, pretty much any other type of gem to qualify for the mines that are out here. Now, of course, eventually the AI is going to start buying these, or somebody will reserve one, and then another one will come in, so I might want sapphires later. You might say, well, the deck is stacked with mines that have a high sapphire cost because currently none of them are out, but, um, it's a tough situation because at the moment I'm not exactly sure I need that fourth sapphire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a, a ruby because the ruby is free as well. It helps me qualify for this noble. I might actually end up just kind of falling into a noble strategy because it's easier for me to get these free cheap mines than it is for me to get some of the more expensive mines. Um, and I'm still getting points doing the noble game that way. Okay. Um, 
yeah, let's get a free Onyx, which gives me a Noble. I'm, I, I don't always go for a Noble strategy. In fact, I usually don't. But in this game, picking up some of the Nobles and then um, just saving up gems for one particular, you know, expensive mine or two might be the way to go. Okay. So what I'd like is Rubies and Diamonds because they help for these two and for these two. I have everything at three except for rubies, so all these things now I can pick up pretty easily. Or at least the fives I can pick up with no more difficulty than I could pick up a four. Um, I think maybe th this game, just kind of the nobles approach, sort of fell into my lap, though. Um, I would have to spend my last ruby to get this thing, whereas the saf or this emerald mine, whereas the sapphires are free. The emerald's a bit more valuable because it brings me closer to this. Yeah, I am going to spend my last ruby to pick up that one because I think it is more valuable. To me to get that fourth emerald and get closer to this one and i'm actually doing well in points thanks to the three points i got from the noble so i have a much bigger economy than my opponents and i'm doing fine on points Alrighty, well let's uh get a ruby here for free so now that gives me another noble and the good thing about that is now i qualify for the rubies for this mine so if i get two more emeralds i can pick up this four pointer right here this is a really good flip. I am hoping I pick it up. No, if he takes it, damn it. That was a really good flip because I could have bought it for free. All right, what I'm going to do here is pick up this Onyx, the cheap one. It's free for me. And the thing I like about it is a couple of things. First of all, it helps me qualify for this Noble. Second of all, now with that Onyx I have left over from an earlier days, I can actually get this my ruby mine giving me two points and my fourth ruby which qualifies me for this noble down here so i'm just going to go ahead and do that <coughs> begging to pardon that's a timer on my computer ahem <clears throat> so uh the question is which one do i take actually i think i am actually going to take the one this is as you can see the cards are not balanced and that, that's not a criticism of the game but it's kind of like a weird thing like these two cards are worth the same points but this one just costs way more gems i'm going to get the cheaper one obviously making it harder for my opponents to steal this one from me one of my opponents does have three diamonds, but this one has only two diamond mines and it have to spend a diamond gem to get this mine right here. Now, at this point, God, I was really hoping to get that one because that one was free for me and that would have given me the last onyx that I need to purchase this mine. All right, I should start angling for the finale at this point, actually. Um, all I need is to buy this and I trigger the end of the game and my opponents are so far behind that there's no way that uh, they're going to overtake me once I get up to 15 points. So we're just going to keep it simple. I'm going to reserve this one so that my opponents can't steal it from me. And then I'm going to use the bonus, or not the bonus, but the, uh, the wild card gem to purchase it along with my four emerald mines. This game I got off to a really fast start, just picking up a lot of mines a lot of fast. And um, yeah, I could, I could get more points, by the way, if I like finagled it so that i bought this mine i would pick up this noble at the same time and you know in this ios app you get like more points if you get more points above 15 but i don't really care about that because i'm just treating this like a game i would play with humans and all i'd care about when i'm playing with humans is winning not necessarily demolishing my opponents with the absolute highest score so i win 15 to 10 to 8 and notice by the way my opponents did get an extra turn each because i was the first player if i had been the third player the game would have just ended as soon as i bought that mine now, in this game, my opponents played pretty badly, or I got lucky with the draw, because 27 turns is actually not a particularly impressive finish. Um, usually, I'm somewhere between, like, 25 at my very best and 28 at my very worst, but I've lost to the AI in, like, 28 turns, so the fact that this took 27 turns is not super impressive. But anyway, hopefully that gives you an idea of what kind of a game this is and how it looks like when it's played out by someone who maybe isn't that great, but can at least talk some strategy. Thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe if you did, and I'll see you again soon with some more videos. Not more Splendor videos, because I'm done playing this, but more other videos. Take care, guys.